Visa calls off its acquisition of Plaid. Webflow raises $140 million as the no-code funding wave continues and a firm goes public and sees its stock price instantly double. That and more on this week's BLG123. Let's dive in. Tab one. Tab one is from TechCrunch and is about Visa and Plaid going their separate ways. So here's what happened. Visa and Plaid called off their planned acquisition almost exactly a year after announcing it. As a refresher, this deal was originally announced last January. That was January of 2020. And Visa was going to be acquiring Plaid for $5.3 billion. It was heralded as a huge success for any startup. Obviously, valuation like this is impressive, and especially for fintech and the fintech movement. But then in November, the DOJ filed an antitrust lawsuit against Visa seeking to block the transaction. The claim was that Visa was effectively acquiring Plaid in order to eliminate a nascent competitive threat because Plaid as a fintech enabler was creating opportunity for more innovation and more choice in fintech and in consumer payments. Visa certainly disagreed and had their perspective on the matter, but that's not really the point of this tab here. Moving on. There's an interesting take from some that this was actually Plaid's choice. They wanted to walk away. As Axios reports, it says that Plaid got cold feet because it knew that it was now worth way more than $5.3 billion. And the DOJ suit and corresponding closing delays gave it an escape hatch. So reading between the lines, it sounds like Plaid had a really great 2020 along with many other tech companies. And they also have seen the prices and the multiples in the market dramatically explode in the last year. And I think they're looking at the situation and saying, we're worth more than 5.3 billion. We see opportunity here. Give us another shot at the market. And if this is true, that Plaid was the one that wanted to walk away, then it's just another data point that the fintech revolution is real, but it's also in its very early innings. So here's what to keep your eye on going forward. First off, what does it exactly look like to come back from a planned acquisition a year later? I don't really know, but it'll be interesting to watch and see how they strategically thread the needle and navigate the market. And second, this market has changed a lot in the last year. There have been new launches from Stripe and new entrants coming into the market, many of whom who have raised mega rounds at mega valuations. But Plaid was dominant in the space. And so as they're re-entering the market, so to speak, as an independent company, it'll be interesting to see how the competitive landscape evolves and shifts around them to see if their dominance continues or if there are new rivals that they have to pay attention to. Tab two. Tab two is from TechCrunch and is about Webflow raising $140 million Series B. So here's what happened. Webflow raised a mega round of $140 million. This round comes in at a mega valuation of $2.1 billion, and it was led by mega impressive investors like Excel, who's an existing investor, Google's Capital G, and Silversmith. And in talking about performance in 2020, the TechCrunch article points to the CEO's quote that they doubled last year. And perhaps even more impressive, Webflow was cash flow positive in 2020. So here's why this matters. Webflow is at the center of three big trends. First, no code. Second, the design tool renaissance and revolution. And third, product-led growth. And obviously the big check at the big price from big name investors indicates that the VC market continues to be extremely strong. So here's what to keep your eye on going forward. This market has always been fascinating to me because there are existing incumbent players that are very, very large, like WordPress, Wix, and many others. WordPress, for example, powers over 39% of the top 10 million websites on the internet. That's pretty dominant. And Wix, for its part, is worth nearly $15 billion as a public company. In many other markets, large incumbent competitors like this that are so dominant might scare VCs off. But this is the website market. And the last time I checked, there's a lot of websites and there are more being created every single day, especially if you include landing pages and all the other stuff that you can do with Webflow. So when you think about that size of the market and some of these key trends like low code and design tools and product-led growth, I understand what these fellow VCs see in the company. And I must say that personally, I'm long Webflow as well. Tab three. Tab three is from Business Insider and it's about a firm's big IPO last week. So here's what happened. A firm had an IPO and it was a massive success. 
Pretty simple. If you aren't familiar with Affirm, they are the company that effectively pioneered the idea of installment payments for e-commerce as a way for merchants to drive conversion. And you've probably seen it on websites, but on the off chance that you haven't, Molecule is one of their customers and is a great example. Say you wanna buy a fancy air filter, but the $399 to uh, basically $1,200 price point is a little too rich for you. You can opt to still get the device, but pay $36 or sorry, $34 a month up to $67 a month. And that's powered by Affirm. And there are other players in this space that have followed Affirm's lead, players like QuadPay, Afterpay, and others. This functionality is increasingly becoming a staple for any e-commerce site, especially those that have a higher price point that you could describe as a considered purchase. So anyway, back to the IPO. The company raised $1.2 billion in its IPO, and the stock price effectively doubled in its debut trading session, and it ended its first day with an effective market cap of $24 billion. So a pretty darn impressive and successful IPO to say the least. So here's why this matters. This is yet another example of the FinTech revolution and the value that it's creating. It was a busy week for fintech. Outside of a firm, we obviously had the Visa and Plaid acquisition fall apart, which we talked about this week on tab one of the PLG123. We also saw a partnership between Walmart and Ribbit, which is a fintech focused VC, to partner together for fintech offerings in the future. Two fintech startups both raised $300 million. MX and Blend Labs. And Rapid jumped in on the $300 million bandwagon as well and raised its own round at a two and a half billion dollar valuation. In this situation, I think I must give a hat tip to Mr. Mad Money himself, none other than Jim Cramer. That's right, I'm referencing that guy on this show. I found this video on YouTube and I think the title of the video says it all. People don't care. If it's FinTech, they buy. Given the crazy numbers that we're seeing in the public and the private market, I think that Mr. Booyah is onto something here. So here's what to keep your eye on going forward. I have three big questions. First, what else will retailers be offering in order to drive conversion and make it easier for consumers to purchase their products? I'm gonna be keeping a close eye on both Affirm and Shopify, specifically here as I think they're going to be leading the pack. Two, what is Affirm's long-term play and big vision? If they're increasingly sitting in front of the checkout flow, that puts them in front of credit card providers, and there could be a huge opportunity there for payments, not just financing and installments. And three, can you imagine how big Stripe's IPO is going to be? If they were going public right now and they are the behemoth in this market, I think that we would see another snowflake-like IPO, if not even bigger. Well, that does it for this week on the PLG 123. Make sure to follow me on LinkedIn for more daily PLG content and stay tuned for our weekly episode drops of the PLG 123 coming at you right here on LinkedIn. Hope you all are having a great week and take care.